Some of you might be planning on farming the new artifact set, Manalith Set, or Tom for short. However, today I want to talk about how it might not be worth it. Before we start, I also want to talk about how sometimes I occasionally stream on Twitch now. Twitch.tv forward slash 1010 games. Also, don't forget to like and comment and subscribe on this video. Okay, the first and the most important concept that I want to talk about is cost. Because of the new artifact just coming out, that means to obtain the new artifact, you have to go to the domain and farm for it, and in the process, spend resin. As, as everyone knows, resin is very, very sacred and expensive, especially for free to play player. And you might already have good artifacts lying around and you might already be using them. For example, on my Zhongli currently, I have an insanely eroded Petra circlet with crit rate as its main stat, and a lot of crit damage and attack percent as its sub stat. Now, if I want to use my Zhongli as a HP shield support bot, I also happen to have a HP percent main stat Noblest piece ready for him. And I can just switch to this and equip the 4 set Noblest to put my Zhongli as a shield support bot. So now you have to ask, is the new artifact good enough to the point where I am willing to give up my old artifact potentially to give it to another character and spend resin, go through RNG to find the piece I want and then spend more resin to level it? Is it worth it for you? And so here is my opinion on the new artifact. The first thing to know about the artifact is the 4 piece set do not stack even though it does not say on the artifact. So you cannot put this 4 set on 2 different characters and get 40% attack and 60% shield strength. It does not work like that. However, you can stack this with Noblest to get a potential 40% attack boost for your entire party. The last thing to know is that the character who equipped the set do not need a shield to proc the 30% shield strength buff. For example, here I equipped the Tom set on my Fischl, then I used Zhongli to generate a shield, who is not wearing the artifact set. At this point, the Zhongli shield on my Deluke will be strengthened by 30%, which is actually being provided by Fischl. This is important to understand for Albedo Zhongli Calm, which we're gonna talk about later. Anyway, starting off with the 2 piece bonus set, which just increased your HP by 20%. This is a really really good start line to have, and it's highly recommended for characters who scale with HP if you're not planning on using a 4 piece set. For example, Diona, Barber, or Zhong Li. 2 plus 2 piece set is very easy to farm for, since you can just look for the feathers as well as the flower, which you do not have to roll for the main stat. Or perhaps you don't even care about the other 2 piece set bonus. For example, I want to make my shield as big as possible and I don't care about the 20% elemental burst damage. So something I could do now is run triple HP main stat, so HP in my circlet, and then HP in my goblet, HP in my sands, and then I just run the 2 piece feather and the flowers for another 20% HP. And perhaps I level my flower to level 20, and I'm done! This also applies to other HP scaling character, except for Hu Tao which you should just run a 4 piece damage set on, for example the Crimson Witch of Flames. Before we move on to the 4 piece set, I want to remind everyone what snapshotting is. Snapshotting means that you have to get the buff before you cast your deployable skill for it to benefit because of its snapshotting property, and apply to like Shaolin Elemental Burst, Beto Elemental Burst, Visual Oz, and more other stuff. And for Tom buff, this means that you have to consistently keep the buff up to ensure that the buff will snapshot onto your skill. If you lost the buff for a split second, and then you cast that skill, you could lose a lot of damage since this effectively means that your elemental skill or elemental burst might not benefit from the buff at all. Moving on to the 4 piece set, starting off with Zhongli. Personally, I'm not a fan of this set on Zhongli and I don't think it's worth it there are too many problems surrounding the fact that you have to play around his pillar. Starting this a bit off immediately you can notice the first problem, and that is my Deluke pushed them away from the pillar and I can no longer get the 4 set Tom buff. I tried to drag them back around to the pillar, however their AI is not too friendly and I'm losing DPS uptime by trying to move them over. The next thing you will note is that when I switch back to my Zhongli and recast the shield, the pillar do not respawn because there is already one on the field and therefore I cannot reposition it. 
Naturally, you can tap your pillar first to reposition it and respawn it. However, doing that not only delay your shield, but also add a complex step that you don't really need into your rotation. So overall, it's not really highly recommended. Surely, you can argue that against stationary target, the bonus is very easy to proc. However, the opposite is also true. There are targets in the game that are very very mobile, and for those, you will never be able to proc the bonus. There are other problems such as the pillar not getting its own buff that I provide because of snapshotting, the pillar not being able to spawn in large target, or just being too easy to break. I think one of the best things about Zhongli is how easy he is to use. You just have to cast his shield and you get a lot of benefit from it. However, now you have to restrict yourself to a silver pillar. Is it worth it? However, this all changed when you have his constellation 1 or 2 or you play him in a Geo team. The Geo Construct Resonance can actually proc the bonus as well, making it very very easy to proc in a Geo team. Constellation 1 allowing to spawn 2 pillar not only mean that it's able to cover more area, but also mean that it is a lot easier to reposition your pillar, since you can still spawn a pillar even when a pillar is up. Constellation 2 simplify this even more, because his elemental burst now give a shield, you do not need to use his elemental skill to generate a shield, which means you're freely to tap your elemental skill to spawn and reposition your pillar making it very very easy to ignore all the weaknesses that I have described. Overall, I think if you're playing him in a Geo team, or you have Constellation 1 or higher Zhongli, then I think this Artifact 4P set is worthwhile, however otherwise, I don't think so much. Next up is Albedo, who I think is the best 4P user for this Artifact. Albedo is like Zhongli but without any of the problem that Zhongli has. His elemental skill not only has a very short cooldown, mean that it is very easy to reposition if it is destroyed or you're just too far away from it, but it is also have a big range which means it is much easier to proc the tom set on him. Recall at the beginning of the video where I mentioned the person who is carrying the 4 set bonus do not need to have a shield to proc the shield strength bonus, and here is why it is relevant. When you're playing Albedo, you're probably looking to play him in a Geo team, for example the very very popular Geo Noel Albedo team. What you'll notice is that Noel have a shield, and Albedo can very easily strengthen this shield up by 30% making it very very good. And this is the same if you're planning on playing other double Geo team, especially one that involves both Zhongli and Albedo. Recall at the beginning of the video where I mentioned you can stack the 4-piece Nobler set alongside with the 4-piece set bonus that Tom give. This means that you can put the Nobler on your Zhongli and then the Tom set on your Albedo and give your party a 40% attack buff and while still getting that 30% shield strength on the Zhongli shield since again the shield strength is universal and the character who triggered the set do not need to have a shield. This make an insanely strong double geo team combo, especially if you're playing another geo DPS like again the Noel or Ningguang. Moving on for Diona, even though the 4P set provide both shield strength as well as attack, I don't think it is good enough simply because the buff lasts too short. This essentially means that you have to switch to Diona and tap her elemental skill every single 5 seconds. You're gonna be losing a lot of field time with minimal benefit. And surely the shield thing is nice, but if you really want a 20% attack buff, just go 4% Nobulus on Diona instead. Jinyan is a surprisingly good user for the 4P set bonus. Her shield pause every 2 seconds, which is exactly enough to permanently keep the buff up. After C2, her elemental burst will also generate the shield, which make it very easy to keep the buff up 100% of the time. However, the problem comes from you have to play Jinyan and well, she doesn't really have a spot in any party right now. Perhaps in the future for Ella, but maybe not now. It seems like Chi Chi is a good carry as well because her elemental skill is deployable and hit for a very very good interval to keep the buff up. However, the thing with Chi Chi is her elemental skill is only up half the time since it only lasts for 15 seconds but have a 30 second duration. That means unless you have Sacrificial Sword, this buff will not be up permanently. But if you have a sacrificial sword, usually that is going to sing Chiu, and so that leaves you Chi Chi with no sacrificial sword. Unfortunately, I have to say, if you really want your cryo healer to provide you with a 20% attack buff, 
just run Noble Steona instead. And finally, Fischl. Fischl can easily upkeep the buff to have 100% uptime by rotating through her elemental skill and her elemental burst. If you're putting her in a team where her damage is not too significant, for example pairing with your Shao, then it is a decent artifact to consider. Do remember that you have to resummon Oz at least once after casting it to snapshot the buff. However, do remember that if you're playing DPS Visual, then you're gonna have to refarm your artifact. That's including both looking for a good main stat and potentially good sub stat. So once again, I ask, as I have asked in the beginning of the video, is it worth it? And that's up to you to decide. And as a final call out, some of you might be thinking that, oh, if I don't have any artifact to begin with, I might as well just farm the new domain, right? And to that, I say yes and no. Remember in my previous Zhongli example, where one of the scenarios you can do is simply pick up HP pieces. They don't have to be from the set at all. And what this means is that you could be farming your artifact for a different character. For example, you are farming the Noblest dungeon, and then if you happen to get the HP pieces, then just put it on your Zhongli. Doing it that way can be a much better return for a resin if you don't think the Tom set is worthwhile and you really need the Noble set for your other character. So just keep that in mind. Anyway, that's it for this video. Do you guys think it is worth and are you guys gonna farm for it? Let me know in the comment and of course don't forget to like and subscribe. Also follow my Twitch shameless blog again. Uh, and see you guys next time.